the beloved 3D Benchy has been sold to NTI Group and everything that goes along with it. And this has created a bit of a stir. So for this Print Fix Friday, episode 175, let's talk about it. This has been something that's been brought to my attention a lot. 3D Benchy, 3D Benchy, 3D Benchy, and that it's no longer owned by Daniel Noray and Creative Tools, and that it was bought by the NTI Group in Sweden. So what does that mean for the average user? Well, nothing. Nobody really even knew about it because that happened in March of 2024. But what actually got people's attention was this public service announcement a benchy ip war is starting printables took down my glitched benchy model and now says they will remove all benchy variants download them all now while you can this kind of upset the internet but the story is not as easy as you might think but before we do that my name's grant this is print fix friday where we normally help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And if you've ever printed a 3D Benchy, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed because we're gonna talk about the history of the Benchy, why it became so popular, and why this IP war is not what you think it is. As the internet does, things got a little out of hand, a little fast, and uh, people started blaming creative tools and NTI for doing this. The TLDR is a third party started doing these IP calls on the Benchy itself. Because the 3D Benchy, which was originally uploaded to Thingiverse back on April 9th of 2015, it actually has a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives license, meaning you can't remix the Benchy. You can you know, make little holders and things like that for it. That's all perfectly fine. But changing the model itself, remixing it, is not allowed. And for, well, almost a decade, this has gone completely untested. Unchecked, no one's really cared, and Daniel Nore, I hope I'm getting your name right here, boss, didn't care. The Benchy became the quintessential 3D model that is what a lot of us know as the standard 3D printing calibration model. And the funny thing is, every part of a Benchy, every single part, is actually measurable. Everything has measurements. And back in the day, we utilized those measurements to help us make sure that printers were actually calibrated. Nowadays, people use it to just physically look and see does my printer look good does it have enough cooling and things like that because by and large most 3d printers will print a almost perfectly sized benchy but will have issues with cooling or something else a lot of people didn't even know that if you do want to see more about it we'll link to it in the description the 3d benchy site has been under attack lately in fact i'm surprised i was even able to load it for this video so if you can't load it check back in a couple of hours or even a couple of days it's been a little bit finicky i'm sure it has nothing to do with the community being very upset about all of this and wrongfully claiming that nti was doing anything this obviously creates a bit of a challenge because the op in all of this said apparently 3dbenchy.com is sending lawyers after platforms like printables but at some point when something is as widely distributed as this they will lose control over it. Currently, two of my cursed Benchies are still online with the link, so please take them and have your way with them before they are gone also. I have a couple I haven't published yet, but I guess I will need a different repository to share them. Once again, the fact that this was even allowed in the first place, technically against the policy. If NTI Group did want to go around and send all these takedown requests, they absolutely could, but they didn't. And we actually have an official response from NTI through Reddit. This is a fun one. They're the marketing manager for NTI Sweden that bought Creative Tools last summer. I realize you may not believe me or care as an avid 3D printer fan myself. I want to give my perspective on how we ended up here. And we can see the big marker here, number six, saying neither I 
or anyone else at NTI have been involved in trying to enforce any license of 3D Benchy. I don't even know what 3D Benchy is licensed under and what that even means, nor trying to take down any derivatives of Benchy. In fact, no one at NTI, besides me a couple of times, has given 3D Benchy as much as a thought in the last six months due to a very busy fall and winter. And there on number eight, we can see that they had just found out that the 3D Benchy website was being down. There was no active decision taken to take down Benchy in order to save 400 euros on web hosting services. It was an honest mistake done in busy times where focus had been on our existing business. So they just, they forgot to pay the hosting. Like that, that, that's what that sounds like. So TLDR was an NTI group and this gets buried in all this hate. Daniel Norrie actually talks heavily about this on LinkedIn. We'll link to the post if you want to read it all. But I think the headline kind of puts the whole thing into perspective. A piece of 3D printing history just faded away and no one noticed. Because the 3D Benji had become so much of a cult classic, if you will, that it was beyond a measurement tool. It was just the thing that you made with your printer to the point where Pretty much every printer manufacturer includes a Benchy model that they've sliced to prove how fast their printers are. Because that's the thing, the speedboat races, right? You want a Benchy that can be printed as fast as humanly possible. But see, the community responded in a way that the community tends to respond. They took 3D Benchy and said, F it, 3D Bodhi it is. So instead of a boat that's a bench, it's a bench that's a boat. And I actually kind of like this assuming that the 3D Bodhi has a ton of different ways that you can measure it. It's another great way for us to add different ways to calibrate, test, and verify 3D printers. So I actually don't hate this idea. I think the name's a little petty, but hey, it's the internet. We're lucky it's only this petty. But the public service announcement here that basically says, hey, the owners of 3D Benchy are coming after you, they're not. And the problem is that you don't actually know who started the DMCA takedown requests with printables. All printables knows is that they have to comply with it by law. This isn't a server hosted in whatever IP lawless land that you can think of that we've definitely never made videos on in the past. This is the EU where they do have to abide by those rules. And when someone points out saying, hey, these are derivatives and the license says no derivatives. Prusa has to go through and handle this. And yeah, it kind of sucks, especially with the timing and Daniel making the post public and it being a big thing. And only a couple of days later, the Benchy starts to fade away and the remixes go away. I totally understand why people went ahead and drew the lines, the red lines. Every day, Pepe's mail is getting sent back to me. Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia. I look at the mail with well, this whole box is Pepe Sylvia. It's not what we saw here. So what exactly does this mean for the future of the Benchy? Nothing. Nothing's going to change. This is literally somebody else unaffiliated with NTI, according to a representative of NTI that did this. This could even be something that was made in error. We don't know. We have to kind of wait for printables to figure out what they want to do. And that likely involves working with NTI to decide what the move is. But as we saw, NTI doesn't really care about the Benchy. They wanted creative tools for other things. Nothing related to the 3D Benchy. So really, what's the takeaway in all of this? One, don't get your pitchforks out until you have all the knowledge and you give a company a chance to respond. Two, just because a company has obtained intellectual property doesn't actually mean they care about it. Could NTI decide in the future that they care about this and they really want to crack down on all these remixes? Well, yes, and legally, it looks like they've got an okay standing. Even though there are some questions regarding the Benchy on My Mini Factory, which as we can see, the license is different. It says My Mini Factory credit remix non-commercial. Thing is, as far as I'm aware, the Benchy was put onto My Mini Factory before My Mini Factory even had licenses. And this is likely just the standard license that was applied 
when they brought licenses to my mini factory. It gets a little legally complicated because this one particular one is different from all the others. I'm not a lawyer. If you want to hear us talk with lawyers, we'll card to our talk with Professor Krista Laser all about the Bamboo versus Stratasys lawsuit so you guys can take a watch on it. So I don't know how this one particularly plays into it, and this is one that people have called out a fair bit saying, well, this one, this one, this one. I, I get it, but we have the response from NTI, assuming this is a real response. It, it appears to be. It was an NTI that was behind it. As far as the future of 3D Benchy on printables goes, only time will tell. If you guys do want to print Bodies and make a Benchy fit on a Bodhi and you know, whatever you want to do, by all means do. In fact, I have said from day one that we need more test models, but I thoroughly encourage others to design, test, create, make, and look at having a simple, fast, easy to print model that can test multiple things on a 3D printer at once. The Benji has been the de facto standard because, well, it just works. If you go to 3dbenchy.com, look at the dimensions, you can see some of the things that the Benji tests. Design your own. Hey, if you wanna post it for free, email it over to us or tag us on social media and we'll add it to the description of this video so others might be able to see it. I think it's important that we have other test models available for those that want them. But at the same time, the Benchy is still, in my opinion, the de facto standard. Although I do happen to think the Bodhi is kind of hilarious. So where does this leave us? Grant, what should I do with my remixed Benchies? I wouldn't worry about it as of right now. Obviously, download a copy, keep it for yourself, enjoy it. Know that you're technically violating the license, but as far as we can tell, NTI Group doesn't care. Don't go off onto other platforms. I really do personally like printables. I know a lot of people enjoy Thangs and Maker World and My Mini Factory. There's plenty of options out there and share it across every one of them, please. The more places you put your models, the more opportunity that you have for that exposure. But understand that you are technically violating the rules. Does that matter right now? That one's up to you, I guess. As far as us, we're going to keep using the Benchy. We like it. It's a decent model. And, well, yeah. It's nostalgic. Everybody at some point that has owned a 3D printer has likely made a 3D Benchy before. And so I'd like to know in those comments down below, have you printed the Benchy? And if you have, did you know about all the things about the Benchy and that Benchy's actually short for benchmark and everything like, did you know kind of the history of the Benchy and what it was there for? Love to know. And hey, if you want, We'll reach out to Daniel and see if we can get him on the podcast. Talk all about it. Talk about the history of the Benchy and how it became the standard for testing 3D printers. But do you want to give a huge thank you to all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 here and higher. Remember, if you do want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel, you can do so by joining for as little as $1 a month. And at the $10 tier and higher, you get to come hang out in our private Discord server where, you know, we hang out. We talk about this stuff pretty frankly in there. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where we traditionally show you how to fix your broken printers and sometimes we talk about some news that tends to ruffle some feathers every now and then. And right, so that will be our tour of Prusa Research from 2023. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your love and hey, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.